Example 3, intersection type of question. Okay, cyclist A here, cyclist B here, cyclist A moving in this direction at uh, 3 meters per second, while cyclist B is moving at a direction that's unknown at the speed of 3.8 meters per second. Okay, in fact, this type of question we have seen it in um, well, lesson 2, example 4, in fact. Okay, exactly the same intersection type of question. So, first of all, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for alpha, and I'm sorry, theta, I mean. Okay, so we're looking for the value of theta uh, of which B will intercept A. Okay, so this is the kind of interception question with which we have seen before. So let's just recap on how do we tackle this type of question. Alright, first of all, we have a point A. Okay, in this, uh, okay so this is a cyclist A and uh, this is a cyclist B, right? So cyclist A moving up this way while cyclist B is moving up this way as well. So this is our VA. In fact, exactly the same kind of diagram that we have here. Okay, so just very, very quickly fill in the blanks. Okay, so that we can uh, vandalize this diagram of ours. Okay, here we go. Alright, so we know that this angle here is 60 degrees, and uh, this angle here is theta. Right, so to find theta, as you can see, is not a very difficult thing to do, isn't it? I mean, this is a triangle, and you do know that this is 3.8. So using sine rule, 3.8 over sine 60 degrees will be equal to 3 over sine theta. So cross multiply inverse sine, you will get your theta's value as 43.13 degrees. Any problem with that? Well, I certainly hope not, okay? Because this is based on something that we have already learned before. It shouldn't be that difficult. Okay, now as to part B, okay? We have to find the time taken for the interception to occur, right? So, uh, as per what we have learned, very simply, to find time is simply the distance divided by the speed, okay? So, we do know that, well, in order to intercept at this point, okay, where well, our B will have to travel at this angle. And since B is already traveling at this speed, in fact, we also know the speed of A, okay, to find the time when B will reach here, is simply to find the distance that B has to travel divided by the speed that B is traveling at. So that will give us the time for B to travel from this point to the point of collision. Okay? That was, uh, I mean, logical, isn't it? Okay? Uh, alternatively, what we can choose to do is, of course, to find the distance here and then divide by this speed of A. Alright? So we take uh, the d distance that A has to travel and then divide by the speed. We, we will get the same time. Okay, so in order to find distance, we need to inco uh, incorporate an element of distance into our diagram. So yes, now we have a distance. Okay, initially they are so far apart, right? So to find distance of uh, the actual distance that B has to travel, we'll just call it x, x meters. Okay, um, so from here, again, it shouldn't be something that difficult, isn't it? I mean, again, using our sine rule, we know that x will be x over sine 60 degrees is equal to um, alright we do need this angle here so knowing this is alpha uh, so knowing that this is theta 43.13 and knowing that this angle here is 60 degrees finding this angle shouldn't be too much of a headache as well okay this angle from the calculator 180 minus away 60 minus with 43.13 will give us the answer of 76.13 seven degrees okay so this angle here will be 76.87 degrees all right so uh, in order to find x we have x over sine 60 degrees will be equal to 120 remember if you're finding distance we'll use distance to find distance okay and if we're finding speed we'll use speed to find speed okay here we go all right so cross multiply we'll get x as um, of course 108 sorry 106 beg your pardon 106.71 meters all right so this will be the distance that b actually has to travel okay and therefore the time to col to the collision with a will be simply the time okay to collision will be simply the distance of 106 0.71 meters 
divide by B's speed, which is 3.8 meters per second. Okay, so that will give us the answer of 28.1 seconds. Alright, so this was basically what we have learned in lesson 2, Okay, where when I actually talk about this type of question before, and what I uh, suggest to do at the point of time was to simply do this way. Uh, do it do the question this way okay so you totally have no need for the relative vector to come in at all there's no need to find the velocity of a relative to b or b relative to a there's no need for that at all okay so keep things simple you know a moving this way b moving that way they'll meet at a common point all right now alternatively okay which is what we're going to learn here and which is why I'm leaving this big space here is to show you the alternate method that uh, is based on what we have just no, uh, learned okay from our example one and example two okay using the relative vector to do okay so in this case here well a and b will intersect each other right so same thing in order to find the theta okay the first thing we do we draw the vector diagram okay so how do we draw the vector diagram simple isn't it okay we just draw a vector diagram okay without the distance just vector a okay vector a will be going up this way va okay and vector b moving up this way vector b all right then we fill in the blanks isn't it okay so this angle here is well 60 degrees this angle here is our theta which is something that we are supposed to find this b is traveling at 3.8 meters per seconds while a is traveling at 3 meters per seconds now the question did not ask us to find the velocity of a relative to b or b relative to a isn't it however okay because we are drawing the vector diagram we have to complete the triangle isn't it so now we have to find the velocity the relative velocity okay so we will find either one in this case we have velocity of a relative to B okay now because the question says that you know they will collide so this vector VAB okay is actually horizontal now what am I talking about now remember what we said about um, you know the vector of VAB being the vector of A relative to B which means that if you are B looking at A, this is how A moving to, uh, you know, with respect to you. Okay, so because A and B should collide, okay, they, they, they are going to collide each other, with each other. So according to B, alright, now let's say you are B, okay, how do you think A is moving towards you? Do you think A should be moving upwards? so that you know one point in time a will be due north of you or do you think that a will be moving downwards okay so that in one point of time a will be below you all right now bear in mind that they are supposed to be on collision path okay they will collide so think about it if you are b of course a will of of course look as though it is traveling towards you directly isn't it and that is the way to intercept okay so in order for a to collide with b according to b a must be moving directly towards b okay on the other hand according to a all right b must be moving all right you guessed it directly towards a okay so vab will be this way which means that according to b a is moving directly towards here and and that is why it is supposed to be horizontal okay all right so this is something new all right um but it's based on something that we already know okay it's just that in uh, the the way that we did this question earlier okay in example two uh qu lesson two i mean i'm sorry okay um we have no worries about the relative vector at all Okay, so actually you can just keep it that way still. I mean, it still works. It's just that uh, since we're talking about this, and uh, this is how we figure out whether uh, two objects will collide each other, collide with each other or not. All right. So th if there happens to be a case whereby you have to figure it out, well, this is what we look out for. Okay.
So, uh, that's it and done. To find theta, we'll go back to our job of finding theta. Okay, so to find theta, well, because this is horizontal and of course this is horizontal as well, so this will be theta and of course this will be our 60 degrees as well. Okay, so again, as you can see, uh, from the triangle to find theta is nothing that's challenging. Okay, it's the same um, sine rule that, you know, that's what we did here. Okay, isn't it? I mean, 3 over sine theta is equal to 3.8 over sine 60 degrees. Okay, exactly the same. Alright, so I hope you more or less understand what uh, am I talking about here? Okay, uh, to sort of like figure out whether A and B has to collide or not. Okay, we always have to look at the um, relative vector. Okay, um, example two and example three we have seen. Okay, they won't collide because according to the ship P Q. I mean, according to the ship Q, then P will be moving downwards or moving upwards, that kind of thing. So they won't collide. In this case, we we will collide. Okay, so to find um, the time, how are we going to find the time then? Okay, we have to use the distance diagram, isn't it? Okay, so distance diagram, how do we draw distance diagram? First of all, take note of the initial position. So, oops, this is not very straight line. Okay, so we have to take into consideration the initial position. So, initial position looks a little like this, 120 meters apart. Now, according to A, I'm sorry, according to B, A is moving directly towards B. Okay, so this is what we got here. So, there's no... And uh, there's no more lines to draw because it's the same line, okay? Which is why they will collide. So the next thing to do to find time, of course, we will take the relative distance divided by the relative speed, okay? Why is this the relative distance? Um, simple, because what you must come to understand is that as time goes on, A and B, because A and B will be moving, alright? So the distance apart between them will be getting smaller and smaller. So, which is why this 120 meters is actually the relative distance. Okay, so to find the time, we'll take the relative distance divided by the relative speed. So, up as for, I mean, up to now, we still have no idea why is the relative speed. So, we'll let the relative speed be y kilometers per hour. So, as not to confuse with the x we have over here. Okay, so this is y. So, we do know this angle as 43.13 we know this angle is 60 set therefore to find this angle shouldn't be too much of a headache as well so to find this angle we'll have um, 76 point what is that? 76.87 degrees okay so to find y is simply an application of your cosine rule isn't it so y square is equal to 3.8 square plus 3 square minus away 2 multiplied by 3.8 multiplied by 3 cosine um, 76.87 degrees oh ah uh, okay but you do know what I'm talking about isn't it? all right so y will be equal to all right from calculator you get 4.273 meters per seconds okay therefore the time that's required for the intersection to occur will be the relative distance of 120 divided by the relative speed of 4.273 and that will also give us the answer of 28.1 seconds alright so this type of question intersection type of question now you have learned okay now you have learned two different methods to tackle this type of question in fact um, either one works okay so there's no need to for you to be too troubled if you can't really you know absorb or understand what this type of question is talking about okay so uh, I mean this type of method is talking about alright so you can still keep it to the same way as what we have learned in lesson 2 alright when we totally ignore the relative velocity altogether and yeah we still get the same answer Okay?